Hola comrades, today's topic of interest, Mario Kart, what are the artistic ethics of spin-offs? I.e., when are you artistically justified in making a spin-off, and when should you let a main series lie? The answer lies in both ideas and execution. Normally, I'm of the belief that execution is enough. You can make a great story out of anything, no matter the concept. I don't care if an idea is cliché. If it's done well enough, it'll seem new and interesting. Conversely, if an idea is done poorly enough, it will always seem derivative and banal, even if no aspect of it had ever been done before. So what makes this different? Well, a spin-off game can still be of high quality, even if it doesn't make any logical sense, but just because a spin-off game is of high quality doesn't make it a positive addition to the franchise. It's the same reason a good game that's a sequel isn't always necessarily a good sequel. Super Mario Galaxy 2, I'm looking at you. For example's sake, let's make up a ridiculous game. Legend of Zelda Golfing. This is a sports game where you get to golf around Hyrule. There's the Hyrule Field Course, there's the Zora's Domain Course, look out for water hazards, there's the Death Mountain Course, where you could end up lofting your ball into the crater if you're not careful. There are two modes. There's the single player mode, called Hyrule Tour, where you have to travel to these different courses and compete against the best golfers in Hyrule, earning new equipment and sponsorships. And then there's multiplayer, where you and three of your closest friends, or three complete strangers that you connect with over Wi-Fi, can pick from a pool of over 20 Zelda characters. Now, this game could be good. It's possible. It could be fantastic, even. It could be realistic and compelling, allowing the player to experience the crests and troughs of golf without having to slog through the draining boredom that comes with them. The Hyrule aesthetic could be implemented deftly, not only attaining credibility, but actively improving the overall experience. The golfing system itself could be of high enough quality to put the Tiger Woods PGA Tour series to shame, but it still would not be a great Zelda spin-off. It would not contribute to the overall mythos of the series. It would not expand upon characters and relationships. It would not further the series' cultural impression, and it would not help place the rest of the series into context. It would not offer any long-term value to the series as a whole. For a look at what a good spin-off can be, check out Pokemon. I'm not kidding. While some Pokemon spin-offs have been empty calorie cloying schlock, such as Hey You Pikachu, Pokemon Channel, or Pokemon Dash, there are also games that substantially add to the overall series ethos, such as Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, which flips the perspective and casts you as the Pokemon, while also offering a grimmer, more existential take on a traditionally lighthearted series, or Pokemon Ranger, which does not measure up to PMD, but is a dang good series in its own right, focusing on the efforts of those who seek to protect Pokemon instead of those who use them to fight. It's a thoughtful examination of the relationship between people and Pokemon, or more broadly, between mankind and nature. Which brings us to Mario Kart, the best Mario spin-off series, and the most popular spin-off series in the history of gaming. It has sold over 100 million copies, more than the entire Legend of Zelda series. You ask an average gamer if they know Mario Hoops 3-on-3 three -three or Super Mario Sluggers, and they'll likely say no. You ask them if they know Mario Kart, however, and you'll probably receive a resounding yes. Why is that? Mario has been in more spin-offs than I can count. He's been everything from a doctor to an Olympic athlete. But it is Mario Kart that has stood towering above the rest. Why? It has everything to do with how Mario Kart endeavors to add to the Mario series, whereas most other spin-offs, even when they're of high quality, seek to merely transfer Mario stylings into a different format. Both the Mario and Luigi games and the Paper Mario games also avoid this trap, but Mario Kart is the most consistent, cast the widest net, and manages to do something greater than transferring Mario's success to a related genre, and that is to take an unrelated genre, dissect it, and make it perfectly reflect the ethos of the Mario series. This is especially laudworthy because the racing genre has a tendency to become addicted to unrelenting realism. Unlike Gran Turismo or Need for Speed, the two other biggest racing franchises out there, Mario Kart's not about obsessing over the technical model and specs of the vehicles. Gran Turismo bills itself as the real driving simulator, and it lives up to its name. Most of its vehicles are accurate, licensed reproductions of real cars, right down to the precise sounds of the engines. Mario Kart, meanwhile, is a cartoonish kart racing game where you chuck turtle shells at the people in front of you to make them spin out. 
They didn't just take the model of a racing game and mold it to fit Mario and friends. They created a racing game from scratch that would reflect the Mario world. There are times when you're playing Mario Kart and you're soaring through a jump with a red shell tracking you and there was just a wild crash behind you because someone found the star and used it to race through the pack. But you forget you're playing a spin-off. It's just Mario. These games add as much to the Mario canon as any mainline Mario games. They contribute as much to the overall reputation of the series. The various Bowser castles in these games are as memorable as any in the mainline games. You get to know how foreboding and ominous Bowser's palaces are. Even the tracks that weren't explicitly based on any real areas in the mainline Mario series, such as Mario Circuit or Luigi Circuit, capture the overall atmosphere of the Mario world concisely. Everywhere you look there are Goombas and Ching Chomps and various other creatures, and navigating through them is a wild ride. Also, just like in the mainline games, a facade of colorful gameplay and entertaining gimmicks belies solid, intricate, precise game design. You give someone who's never heard of the Mario series Mario Tennis or Mario Golf, and they won't be able to tell you what the series is really about. You give them Mario Kart, and they will be able to infer that clearly. They will know the aesthetic of the world, and they will know why it means so much to so many. I would like to say that I have fond memories of playing Mario Kart. Aside from Super Circuit, I played every entry religiously. When I went to get my haircut, the stylist would let me play Double Dash, which quickly became my favorite entry in the series. It still is today. I would race to win an entire cup before the stylist finished cutting my hair. Good times. Thinking about that, I can't help but get nostalgic. More importantly though, by the time this video is released, it will have been a full year since I released the first analysis video on this channel, on Red and Blue and the Freedom of Choice. If you're viewing this immediately after release, you might find that the Red and Blue video is no longer available for viewing. Those show pro idiots who wrongfully violate fair use and take down any video which features clips from the Pokemon TV show, even for criticism and analysis, got it banned from YouTube. I'll bring it back online by summer. Trust me. Since that video, though, I've learned that this process is both easier and harder than I made it out to be. Easier in the sense that there are patterns you can follow to make the video making process slightly easier for you, and harder in the sense that making one of these every week wears on you. It adds up. I've learned a lot, and I don't regret doing this, even if I haven't had the level of success that I originally envisioned. Now that I'm finishing up high school and taking a gap year, I'll have more time, and I intend to use it to make these videos even better. Thank you for sticking with me. I greatly appreciate it. So if you liked what you saw today, consider donating to my Patreon so I can produce even more accelerating content. Also, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that ultra-stellar stuff. Adios, comrades!